All right, uh, we're back. In this video, we're gonna be using ggplot to plot multiple things at once. Uh, so it's pretty common to want to have several different kinds of things going on in your graph, not just to plot the data, but maybe say to uh, plot it by some sort of category or group or overlay one plot on top of another. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with um, something that is pretty common to do, uh, which is to just simply plot two things on the same set of axes. So a pretty common application of this is to take a scatter plot and to put a regression line on top of it. So what I've actually got here is I've got the exact same code that we finished with last time, that we have things like our scatter plots or our, uh, our regressions in here, or our bar graphs or histograms, whatever it is, right? So we've already loaded in our tidyverse and our haven and our crime data, we have that. And we have this scatter plot from last time, okay? Uh, so what can I do in order to put a regression line on top of it? Well, it's pretty easy. Well, I added the, the point geometry to get this. All I gotta do to add the regression is to add my my uh, my regression geometry, which is of course from geom smooth, and I did the lm method. Okay, so I just do that, and there we go. We have the exact same scatter plot with my regression on top of it, and those prediction intervals uh, on that as well. Okay, so that's simple enough. Uh, we can even do it if we want to change the aesthetic, right? When I add in a second geometry here, I can actually put a new aesthetic in it. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, let me introduce another geometry. So this time, let's take our scatter plot. Uh, and this time, what I'm going to want to do is we're going to do a scatter plot with a mean line. So this is another thing that you might commonly want to do with a scatter plot is to add on a line that indicates where the mean of the data is. It's pretty common. So for this, all I got to do is I'm going to add on geom underscore h line for a horizontal line geometry. There's also a vertical line, which we'll talk about in a second, and also an AB line, which I'm not gonna talk about, but you can look up the help file for. So for H line, I needed to specify a new aesthetic, okay? And in this aesthetic, it doesn't take X and Y, what it takes is the Y intercept as an aesthetic. So it's, I'm saying, well, what variable I'm gonna put in for the, for the Y intercept? Well, I want it to be the mean of the log of the crime rate, there we go. So if I do that, it'll give me my scatter plot with the mean value on the y-axis going right there, uh, overlaid on top. So that's one way in which we can graph multiple things on once by simply adding on new plots on top of the old plots that we already have by just simply adding them on with a plus sign and putting new geometries. Uh, for some of those new geometries, we'll need to change the aesthetic so that we can do those multiple plots at once properly. Okay, so that's one thing we can do. Um, uh, we can also do a vertical line if we want to, for example, take our density plot that we had before. Okay, so we did this density plot, if you recall. Uh, and we also limited the uh, coordinates. Let's put, bring that in as well. So we use chord Cartesian to limit the coordinates of our density plot. So we can get a bit of a better look at it. Okay, so now I want to put in a vertical line to indicate the mean of the data. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add in geom v line. We need a new aesthetic here. We need a x intercept. We want that to be the mean of our x variable here. Now this is, happens to be the same variable in both cases. It doesn't have to be necessarily. I could put whatever I wanted here. Uh, I could, you know, put a, do a scatter plot and then do a geometry with an entirely separate scatter plot on top of it. Uh, it, they might, it, they, I would just make sure that they overlapped and so that I could actually see what's going on, but you know, I can do whatever I want. Mess around, see what you get, right? So here we have our density plot. I've put the mean in right here. We can see that the mean is considerably above the peak of the distribution, which makes sense because as we saw before, there are a lot of extreme positive values bringing up the mean. Okay, so that's how we can put one graph on top of another. Uh, another thing that's very common to want to do is to plot things by group. Uh, to, for example, so in this case, we have our crime data, right? And, uh, you know, we have a scatter plot, perhaps. So let's bring back our scatter plot once again. But let's say that I want to uh, maybe see how different two groups in this data are. So, for example, maybe I want to compare uh, urban areas versus rural areas. Now, just looking at the scatter plot right now, I can't tell them apart. But all I gotta do is change the aesthetic. So the aesthetic doesn't just have our coordinates in there. It's got X, it's got Y. It's also got any variable that we might want to use 
to group the data, right? What's X, what's Y, what's the group? What's that third dimension that we're comparing things over, right? Because what we have, we have things that vary over X, we have things that vary over Y, we could also have things that vary over a group. So I'm gonna add in the aesthetic here, you gotta be careful to get it in the aesthetic or it won't work, uh, color equal to urban. So if I do this, it will separate out the urban, uh, which is the light blue here, from the non-urban, which is the dark blue. It will also give me a legend telling me what's going on. So I can tell apart, okay, well, this is what the urban data looks like, and this is what the rest of the data look like. Now, you might be thinking, it's kind of weird that it gave me a scale for urban when it's just a zero, one variable, but that's because in this particular data set, uh, urban is stored as a numeric variable, not a factor. So if I want to make sure that it treats it properly, uh, so make sure it knows that urban is binary. So instead of having it be urban by itself, I'm gonna say, hey, this is a factor variable, treat it like a factor, if you please. So now it'll, it'll just know it's zero or one, and it'll, it'll give us a more stark distinction. Uh, so color is one way in which we can group things. We can, all, we can uh, do other things as well. So for example, we can use the shape of the dots instead of the color to separate things out. So I'm gonna take this and shape. Uh, now this one's a little bit hard to see. So if I did this and I saw how messy it was, I probably would go back and maybe pick color instead. But you can see that it's, it's color the uh, non-urban environments with a, or with a circle and the urban environments with a diamond. Uh, so that you, know, you can just barely see that they're different. Uh, so in this case, I wouldn't go ahead and use shape, but color instead. But depending on what graph you're actually looking at, maybe shape would make more sense. But the important thing is we're defining the shape or the color in our aesthetic as the third thing that we vary over, right? We don't just vary over X. We don't just vary over Y. We vary over the shape as well, okay? Uh, and we can, of course, do this with other kinds of graphs as well. Uh, maybe we want um, uh, to do our density plot like this. So we can bring in our density plot, which of course looks like this. And maybe we want color equal urban or factor urban. So now we get two overlaid density plots, right? One for urban, one for non-urban. And of course, it'll give us a nice legend to tell us which one is which, okay? So that's the key for how we can plot things by groups. It's pretty common. Uh, we can also do this. Uh, for line plots, that's another common thing to do, to plot how different things maybe change over time. So we did a line graph last time uh, where we grouped things by year uh, and then plotted out right, our line graph. So we so how the police per capita changed over time. What if I want to look at how that varies by urban? Well, first of all, in this case, I need to uh, make sure that I keep urban in my data set, right, because I, I did this uh, this group by and summarize, which drops out urban because I didn't account for it. But if instead I, uh, I do group by year and urban, which is important there, and then I have X is my year, Y is my police per capita, and color is urban. So if I do this, it will now, uh-oh, forgot to do factor, factor urban. There we go. Uh, so we have two different line plots, one for urban and one for non-urban. And you can do all sorts of different groupings in this way. Uh, so we can go ahead and get rid of all this other code. We don't need it. Uh, so, but we can see here, uh, there are several different ways of overlaying plots. Uh, one, of course, is to just add on new geometries on top of the geometries that we already had. Now, in, in, what, in, in what we did, we uh, sometimes needed to just add on the new geometry, like with the regression line. It already knew uh, what my aesthetic was, what my data was, and I just needed to add on a second geometry over the top of the first one. Uh, in the other one, where we wanted to do a H line or a, a V line, we had to change the aesthetic. You can also even change the data itself. That works too. Uh, it gets a little bit trickier, but you can do it. Uh, although most of the time you're not going to be doing that, so I'm not going to go through the steps, but you can figure it out if you do need to. It is possible. Uh, beyond overlaying one geometry on top of another, we can group things in our graphs. So the aesthetic itself doesn't just have to track how things vary over X or vary over Y. It can also vary things over a third dimension, uh, which is color or shape or line type.
right? Uh, so actually in this case, uh, I, when I did the line graph, I said, okay, we're gonna have a color, but we can also do line type. Maybe you have a, uh, want it to be black and white or something like that. So now here it automatically generates a solid line and a dashed line. You can tell those things apart. Uh, so this is how we can overlay plots on top of each other, which is a very handy thing to do. Comes up a lot, uh, and that's about it. All right, I will see you in the next video uh, in which we are going to be talking about how to put nice titles and legends on our graphs and not just have it be the automatic variable names that we have. All right, see you there. Thank you.